what evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, the Mutual Network brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow. The hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Is there anybody in your house who doesn't know about United States savings bonds? Perhaps it's just that they don't recognize the new peacetime name their war bonds have acquired. Just remember that in peace as in war, your e-bonds are the safest investment in the world with the highest rate of return for you. So plan to continue your payroll savings plan with regular amounts put into savings bonds each payday. Three dollars in bonds today will grow into four ten years from now, ready to help make all your dreams come true. Now, the shadow. The shadow who aids the forces of law and order is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret, the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Ghost Wore a Silver Slipper. <laughs> Sleepy, darling? Mm-hmm. Mm. Say, it was too bad Johnny Cole was ill, wasn't it? Yeah, he's a nice guy. Mm-hmm. The Tuttles are wonderful people, too. I think so, too, darling, but that ping-pong business sure wears me out. Oh, me, too. I'll be <sighs> stiff for a week. Oh, don't mention that word. It's not here. What word? Stiff. Why? At the cemetery we're packing. <laughs> oh, well, oh, the Brettwood. That's a pretty name. Brentwood? Brentwood Cemetery, Michael. Oh, that's what the sign says. Why? Oh, nothing, I guess. It just sounds awful familiar somehow. Margot Cemetery is a nice place to be unfamiliar with. Yes, you're so... Lamont, watch out! I see her. I thought that woman almost walked into us. That was close. Darling. Hmm? Something's wrong with that girl. She didn't even look up. Well... And look, no hat or coat, nothing but a fluffy white evening dress. She looks like she's trying to walk someplace. Ask her if she'd like a lift, Mark. Yeah, right. Um, Miss? Miss, can we give you a lift? She doesn't answer. No, I... Um, can't we take you somewhere? We're headed for town. Take me home. Why, surely, of course we will. I'll get out and help her a lot. Okay. Here you are. Now you just get right in back. Okay. There. Now, where can we take you? My father. All right, but um, where is he? Burnham Curiosity Shop, 1432 2nd Street. Uh, are you feeling ill, Miss Barnum? No. Well, um, uh, is there anything else we can do for you? No. Well, you just pull that robe over you and we'll get you to your father and the gifter. You better get started, Lamont. Yes, dear. Well, there's something strange about that girl. You're telling me. Yes, and something familiar, too. I've seen her somewhere. Oh, First the cemetery and now the girl. Really, Margot, this is your night. Margot. Hey, wake up. Oh. Oh, golly. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll make a fine driving companion, don't I? Have a good rest? Yeah, but I'm as bad as the guy in the back seat. <laughs> Well, I guess we're there, dear. Uh, Miss Barnum, your father's shop should be along here somewhere, shouldn't it? I guess he fell asleep, too. Miss... Lamont, she's gone. What? Well, she... 
Well, where'd she go? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Margot, this... Uh, how could she have gotten out? I didn't even stop for a light all the way in. Uh, Lamont, we, we didn't dream this, did we? Darling, only you were asleep. We'll soon find out. Where are you going? She said her father's shop was at 1432 Second Street. That should be right down the block. Oh. Well, there it is, right there. Yes, 1432. M.W. Barnum. Curiosity. Lamont, wait. I remember now. Remember what? I remember now where I saw that girl before. And the Brentwood Cemetery, too. Her picture was in today's paper. She died from an overdose of sleeping pills. She what? No, no, it's true. I read it in the paper. Madeline Barnum, daughter of a curiosity dealer, died from an overdose of sleeping pills. Now, pill. wait a minute. And she was buried this morning in the Brentwood Cemetery. Margaret, you mean our passenger was a, a corpse? A ghost? Well, I know. It's... Oh, really, oh. darling. Come on, let's see if anyone's in the shop. Well, how do you explain it, then? Well, I don't yet, but I certainly don't underwrite your ghost theory, either. There's a light on in there in the back. Hmm. Maybe it's just a nightlight. No, no, I see someone coming. Yes. Um, uh, Mr. Barnum? Yes, that's right. Who are you? I, I don't think I know you. Uh, you don't, Mr. Barnum, but... We may have something to tell you that will interest you. May we come in? Oh, yes, of course. Come in. Uh, Mr. Barnum, this is Miss Lane, and I'm Lamont Cranston. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, we come with a rather strange story. Tonight we're driving past the Bretwood Cemetery. Bretwood? Yes. We almost ran over a girl, a beautiful young girl, dressed all in white. We stopped, and she asked us to take her to her father. You mean... Yes, Mr. Barnum. She gave your name and this address. Get out. Wait, Mr. Barnum. Get out. But, but Mr. Barnum... Do you hear me? Get out, get out. I don't know what you're trying to do. But it's the dirtiest thing I've ever heard What's of. your daughter? Yes, my daughter. My daughter. She's been dead since yesterday morning. I thought even thieves had some heart. Do you have to come in here on the... On the very day she's... Buried. Oh, Madeline... <laughs> Barnum, you don't understand. Please leave me. Please leave me. Come on, Donald. Well. Darling, would you like to see that newspaper? Well, yes, but I don't know what good it'll do. Their story ends with a girl being buried. <laughs> Toward the back of the paper. The little uh, card. Here it is, Margot. See, I told you I'd read it. Madeline Barnum, daughter of M.W. Barnum, curiosity dealer, was interred today in the family mausoleum at Brentwood Cemetery. The doctor, Robert Steele, said the death was undoubtedly accidental. He'd been prescribing for her, and evidently she'd taken too many pills from the wrong bottle. Accidental. I wonder. And why that isn't the point. The point is she is dead. And that she was dead long before tonight. And so it seems. Well, Mark, you better find yourself something to do tomorrow. It looks like the shadow is going to have a busy day. Doing what? Well, first, I'd like to see that death certificate on file. The next step is a friendly chat with Dr. Robert Steele. <laughs> Good afternoon, Swan. Good afternoon. How is the Honorable Mr. Barnum today? As well as a grieving father can be. My deepest sympathies. Thank you. It is unfortunate that you cannot encompass the attitude of my people toward death, Mr. Barnum. With us, this is a cause for happiness. The release of the tortured soul to a world where our honored ones wait more than compensates for the momentary... Earthly grief. But I miss her so. Poor madman. Yes, yes, of course, of course. But Mr. Barnum, have you secured for me more of those beautiful antique clocks? Yes. Just this afternoon, five of them. Oh, excellent. And now, Mr. Barnum, here are the three clocks you sold me yesterday. 
And here are the names of the three customers who will buy them. Mr. Warren, what's in these clocks after you bring them back? Hmm? Something that's so interesting to their eventual customers. Curiosity, Mr. Bonham, is a scorpion. Left alone, it is not harmful. Touched, it will turn with death-giving tail. We agreed that for certain sums, you would not display curiosity. These clocks contain something. I wonder what. Well, in the base, we find packets of white powder. Narcotics. Narcotics. In the base. My daughter knew that, too. Didn't she, Mr. Warren? And you knew she knew, didn't you? Didn't you? Yes. And that's why you murdered her. She was going to the police. Are you going to the police, Mr. Barnum? No, Mr. Warren. I begin to see your point of view about death. Going to the police will not bring Madeline to life again. Yes, death should be a happy occasion. So from now on, Mr. Warren, I shall be happy managing your business. Oh. From now on, I select the customers for the clock and receive the purchase price. I see. You have, of course, made arrangements to prevent an accident to yourself. I have? Tell me. Where did you acquire your recent wisdom? The doctor you brought to this house, Mr. Wan. I see. Doctor. Doctor Steele. I'm dying. Who stabbed you, Doctor? What happened? Dying can't see you. No man can see me, Doctor. I am the Shadow. Shadow? Yes. Tell me, who did this to you? I don't know. Dying. Doctor, do you remember Madeline Bonham? You signed her death certificate. Yes. Are you sure she was dead? Yes. Sleeping pill. Are you sure? Did you actually see her die? Yes. Wait. Truth. Could have been alive. Could have been alive. Then you didn't actually see her die. No. <laughs> Doctor. Hmm. Between his ribs, an oriental dagger. <laughs> If the mausoleum is empty, then that ends the ghost theory, huh? That's right, darling. Dr. Steele actually didn't see that girl die. Her empty grave will prove that she's as alive as you or I. I'm glad you're so sure. Well, the cemetery gates aren't kept locked. I'd like it better if they were. Come on over this way. I'm coming. Now, this mausoleum door... Hmm. It isn't. There's the casket. Now watch this, Margot. Here's where your ghost theory falls flat on its spooky face. Casket rests on a platform right out in the open and it isn't even locked. I don't care what you say. That girl looked like a ghost. She did. Well, if you hold the flashlight. Thank you. Now I'll show you an empty coffin. <laughs> She's there. She's there. Yes, Margot. She's been dead for quite some time. We will never want for anything. Sometimes that looks like a pretty big order. But there's one way that you can be sure of financial protection for your wife and youngsters. Let Uncle Sam help you. Put part of your weekly paycheck into United States Savings Bonds the easy way. Continue your payroll savings plan. You didn't miss those small regular amounts deducted each payday for war bonds, so keep up the habit with savings bonds. 
They're the same time-tested investment with a new name. They'll still pay off $4 for every three in ten short years. That's Uncle Sam's way of saying thanks for your lending him the use of your money. And when the ten years are up, you'll begin to receive a steady income as your bonds mature. Or you may set aside a definite time each month to purchase saving stamps or bonds. They're available at your store, bank, or post office. Hold each bond till it comes due. You won't lose a cent if you need to redeem them for an emergency, but you will gain in dollars if you let them reach maturity. Now back to the shadow. We return to our story a few minutes after Cranston's terrifying discovery. The girl who had to be alive has been found dead in her coffin. Cranston has helped the trembling Margot into the car, and they're heading back toward home. Come on. You realize this car has a distinction? How, dear? Not three feet from us in the back seat. It's written a ghost. Right back there, not three feet in back. Margot, stop it, stop it. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I am being silly, but... What can you think? She dies. We meet her on the road, so... That means she's alive, only, only she's dead. I know, I know. Where does the other dead person fit into it? The doctor, he must be connected somehow. Well, I don't know. I, I... Margo, I have a feeling there's someone in this puzzle we haven't met yet. Another body? Well, I don't know. There's one thing I do know. What? You've got to start looking where this whole business began. You, you don't mean it's No, Margo. I mean Barnum's Curiosity Shop, where the ghost wanted to be taken in the first place. He doesn't live at the shop, Margo. I just been checking today. I guess he just happened to be working late tonight. We uh, rode the ghost. Uh, it's on the lock. It'd be easier to jimmy the front door, but it's probably wired with a burglar alarm. Let me help you in. in the back room. Yes, we are. This seems to be a combined storeroom and a place for Mr. Barnum to rest. Mm-hmm. Also, it must like tea. Look. It's a genuine oriental piece set. Used recently, too, hasn't it? Yeah. Come on. Where did all this old stuff come from? Cars, coconut shells, porcelain. Oh, what? Look at that horrible little dagger on the wall. Why is it mounted diagonally like that? Look. What? Look here. A silver slipper. A woman's silver slipper. Madeline Barnum's slipper. She had it on when we picked her up on the road. Its maid is probably still on her foot. In her grave. Don't move. Please. Oh, what? Don't move. Oh. What are you doing here? Why, what? Uh, we're friends of Madeline Barnum. This is Miss Lane. I'm Lamont Cranston. Oh, so. <laughs> Excuse me. I thought you were burglars. And what are you doing here? I am Lee One. Also a friend of Miss Barnum and Mr. Barnum. Oh? In fact, I am Mr. Barnum's best customer. Mr. Barnum gave me tea tonight to pick up my tea set. But why are you here? We think Miss Barnum was murdered. Murdered? Yes, Mr. One. If you forgive us, we have to be leaving. You go look for clue to murderer? Yes. Where? Madeline Barnum's grave. Oh, true. Mr. Cranston, may this small person go with you. I, too, would like to find Miss Barnum's murderer. I wish you would, Mr. Wong. I think you might be very useful. Cranston, it is so dark out here. So mysterious. Cemeteries usually are, Mr. Wong. Where does the lovely Miss Lane get her courage to visit such dismal places? I sometimes wonder. <laughs> yes. Well, this Quite. is it. After you, Mr. Wong. Oh, thank you. Uh, are you going to open the coffin, Mr. Cranston? Yes. Do you hold the flashlight, please? Certainly. Oh, it did look heavy. Not too heavy. 
ago, I thought so. Everything is clear. Come on, I've got to get a gun. Get to that one. Do not wait for my hand, so. But it will do you no good. I hear you moving over there. Ah! I, uh, how you say, got him? Come on, are you all right? No, Miss Lane. You can keep up inside of the door lock. Move out. Come on. No I... door. Lock it from outside. I... Oh, Miss Lane, do not run away. Now I have to take you. Because you, I do not shoot. Not yet. We wait for Mr. Barnum. I have telephoned him to come to his store. Why? Are you going to kill him too? Yes. Ah. Come in, Mr. Barnum. Gun say move fast. We wait for you. Lane, what are you doing here? I, I explain that too. You see, Mr. Barnum, the time has come for Lee Wan to move his business to other vicinities. Your business? My business. I'm afraid our partnership has to be dissolved. Too many people are aware of circumstances causing partnership. One person, Lamont Cranston, already dead. And he's going to kill us, Mr. Barnum. Do you remember my protection in case of my death, Wan? Reason why I move business to other cities. Mr. Barnum, many things here burn easily, no? You're going to set fire to the place? Yes, Mr. Barnum. So, uh, uh, who hit my hand? My gun! <laughs> who left? Who's in here? The shadow, Mr. Barnum. Oh. I can't see you. No, you cannot see him, Mr. Barnum. But he is here. We, we know of you in my country, Shadow. The Avenger of Crime. Yes, Liwan. The Avenger of Crime. So, I am ready. It is useless to fight the shadow. I am guilty, guilty of selling narcotics and of murder. Lee Wan, you're guilty only of attempted murder. The murderer stands there. What? Me? Guilty of murder? Yes, Mr. Barnum. Guilty of the murder of your daughter, Madeline, and the doctor, Robert Seal. You're crazy. I'm getting... Stand a... still. One move and an invisible man will see justice done now. Justice? comes on wheels of speed. Yes, Lee Wan. Justice for one of the foulest crimes man can commit. Murder of a daughter out of pure greed. I didn't. Lee Wan killed her with sleeping pills. No, Barnum. She was still alive when buried. But she revived and came back to warn you about Lee Wan's narcotic smuggling, not knowing you were a part of it. Never dreaming she would meet death by the hand of her own father. <sighs> to kill one's own child is spiritual suicide. Shame. Obama. Obama. Come in, Commissioner. I've kept these men waiting for you. Ah, uh, grab them, man. Okay. 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 So yes, you're still here, oh, Shadow. Oh. You usually don't wait around after you call me. This case will need explaining, Weston. Sit down. Oh. First one thing. When we're through, go out to Brentwood Cemetery and release the Mount Cranston from Madeline Barnum's mausoleum. And tell him to keep his amateur nose out of things that don't concern him. Well, I'll be... Well, what's the matter to me? Your store isn't locked. She was just stuck in the outside. <laughs> I've been turning the key and locking the door. Oh, come in. Oh. All right, Cranston, you can come out now. Thank goodness you got here. I couldn't get out. Uh, did you try pushing hard on the door? Why, no. Oh, don't tell yes, me. Yes, it was open all the time. Now, wait right here. Don't move and I'll be right back. I want to tell Cardona to get the photographic squad up there. Oh, we won't budge an inch, Commissioner. Quick, come on. While Grant is gone. The uh, shadow explains things pretty well, but there are still a couple of points I don't understand. Question away, darling. Well, Madeline Barnum was buried without embalming because of her faith. Mm. And that's how it was possible she was put in the mausoleum still alive. That's right, right, darling. She regained consciousness just a few minutes before we met her the other night. She was still groggy from the effect of the drug. Didn't hurt her ghost appearance a bit. Well, and then she jumped out of your car. It must have been the minute I slowed down and turned to wake you up. Then she hid somewhere and later made her way to her father's house? Yes. 
But tell me, why didn't the doctor discover that you were still alive? Because he wasn't really a doctor at all. He was a member of Juan's group using forged credentials. Yes, but what made you suspect Juan? That dagger on the wall in his back room. Remember you said it was hung diagonally? Yeah. Well, there must have been another dagger on the wall originally, making a pair of them crossed. And that was the dagger which stabbed the doctor and also killed Madeline. Oh, so that's what you noticed when you opened the coffin the second time? Yes, darling. When Madeline told her father what she knew, he saw a golden opportunity to become rich by blackmailing one. Hmm. So then he killed Madeline and then killed the doctor to keep him from talking. Ironic, isn't it? Madeline killed by the very person she tried to protect. Well, what happened in the mouth of the... You know, for a minute, I thought Juan had killed you. So did Juan. He didn't realize he was shooting at the shadow, and the shadow is a hard fellow to hit. <laughs> Actually, darling, I was with you and Juan all the way back to Barnum's shop in the back seat. Oh, well, I'm not watching. Watching coming back. Oh, oh hi, uh, Commissioner. Uh, everything straightened out? Yes, everything's okay. Only, um, Cranston, there's one thing I want to tell you. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, from now on, you keep that amateur nose of yours out of things that doesn't concern you. Commissioner, you're so right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mr. Cranston. Let's go over there. figured recently just how much you saved in war bonds through your payroll savings during the past year? Add them up. It makes an impressive total, doesn't it? Chances are you didn't even miss those small regular deductions each payday. Well, here's a suggestion. Your payroll savings plan is a mighty good habit to continue now that war bonds have converted to their peacetime role of United States savings bonds. With a backlog of war bonds, you've already a head start on your plans for the future. But now's the time to make sure those plans come true by building up that backlog with United States savings bonds. These bonds are still the best investment in the world, with a payoff at maturity of $4 for every three invested. Your war bonds have done their job for Uncle Sam, but they're still working for you. Hold on to them. Your bonds will never be worth less than you paid for them. This story is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. The characters, names, places, and plots are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Again next week, the shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears it does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, the Mutual Network will bring you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadows' daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen. And friends, remember, hold your United States war bonds to maturity. Invest your peacetime dollars in United States savings bonds regularly through the payroll savings plan or from your nearest store.